Easterbrook is a remarkable scientist with a lot of knowledge in many disciplines. He has his books, Evidence-Based Climate Change. You know, not speculatives, as I precisely say, but evidence-based. And he started this. What we're really going to discuss very much is the um, grand solar maxima and grand solar minima through time up to today. Uh, and before starting his picture, his uh, I just want to clarify what we are talking about, because not all of us know the subject very well. You know, variation in the solar activity. It can go to the irradiance and the solar wind, and we have the cosmic ray falling in here. The shielding here by, from the solar wind the, um, controls the infall of cosmic ray. That affects the beryllium 10, the C14, and the cloud formation. So when, when Easterbrook is talking about this is the system, and the Earth rotation, uh, uh, I have uh, um, peers talked about, and that is what we talk about in climate change instead of CO2. But just that to show you know what I'm talking about, because I have a lot of slides from him, so I have to go a little fast sometimes. Easterbrook, cause of little ice ages and climate. Okay, see, this is important. It, the remarkable correlation of sunspot number, um, that is called by the, the total solar irradiance, solar magnetic flux, cosmic ray intensity, production of rates of C14, beryllium, uh, ionization of the atmosphere, cloud production at global temperature of a thousand of years provide geological evidence for a linkage to a likely solar cause climate change. This is the base. And because you have all those parameters changing, say, telling the same story, it cannot just be a coincidence. That is his main message. Okay, uh, and here he has this Dalton, uh, and the cool period and the warm period. Unfortunately, the, the time there is not correct. This is, of course, the mother for everything, the sun. And it's changing inside and at the surface. We talk about the number of sunspots, the solar irradiance, strength of the solar magnetic field, cosmic radiation, cloud cover, and the global temperature. The number of uh, sunspots, good correlation with temperature. Sunspots are the result of um, a localization of magnetic field in the sun. Sunspots are the effect of solar magnetic field, but not the cause of climate change. Um, the total solar per unit area in the Earth's surface, that's irradiance. The strong correlation between the total solar and global temperature. Not strong enough to affect the global temperature, there are other things. Solar magnetic field, control of the amount of cosmic radiation received by the Earth. Ground solar maxima and mina affect global temperature, for sure. And cosmic ray, variation in the strength with the solar magnetic field. So, Easterbrook is talking about the solar magnetic field and includes by that both, both irradiance and uh, <coughs> um, uh, um, solar wind. So this is a surface with the spots, sun spots, looking like that. And um, the spans are d dark parts with very high temperature. And of course, they have varied not only in the 11 year cycle, but also in the grand solar maxima and mina. And it's the grand solar maxima and mina will really have an effect on the Earth's surface. It's just pictures of that. The sun has just ended, just ended the grand solar minima. Uh, ground has just entered into a grand solar minima, which has been accomplished by deep global cooling. Oh, deep uh, co cooling. In, uh, uh, 1650 to 18 ground solar minimum result in several cooling, coolings known as the little ice ages. Uh, during ground solar minima, sunspots became rare to absent. Okay? 
So you have the known, well-known Maunder minimum low. It's a hardly any, <coughs> any sunspot at all. And then comes the 11-year sunspot cycle. So this is a ground solar minima, and here we are going to ground solar maxima. That's the difference, and that's what has impact on the Earth's climate. And very clearly so, if you take the temperature in England, uh, you see the curve uh, of um, uh, uh, the index of that, and it comparison in time with, with the modern minimum. Okay? It works very well. And of course, that's why it could, could host frost festivals or on the Thames, and so on. And you could, we knew that in the Rhone, where the uh, Rhone Glacial advanced, and it's, it's, of course, historical documentation of this. So it's a fairly good correlation of, of these things. And you have, you have the fo following the moon, the minimum, it was a grand solar maximum, a very sharp, minimum, Dalton minimum, and then other periods <coughs> in the late 19th, uh, 19th century, uh, in the middle of the 20th century, and now it's coming down. And it's beginning, we have already, according to Easterbrook, started descend into this one. It's about what we heard from Kalenda. It's, it's a similar picture, but a totally different uh, source of, of information. And um, <coughs> The modern minimum and total solar irradiance. Okay, Dalton, there's other ways of uh, solar, uh, solar electronic magnetic radiation per unit area received from the sun in watts per square meter. Uh, it correlates well with the sunspot numbers. So what we see on the Earth correlates with something in the sun. It's not so bad. And the other way of, of doing it, it's about the same thing. And uh, we are now here, and the question is, are we going down? We know that the sunspots here have changed tremendously, and you will talk about that. <coughs> and other ways, so the sunspots are low, the, the, the so total solar areas and temp temperatures low. And here you have the various Antarctica, Greenland, uh, global, so, so, uh, I don't know, the uh, minimum, Dalton minimum, the low here, and, and so on. It's just to see those comparisons and correlations. And the 60 to, uh, whenever solar irradiance was low, temperature was low. Low, 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 low. Isn't that nice? <coughs> and then the other ways of doing it, uh, Dalton is quite sharp, and, we come. and the question is, of course, when we are coming here, is it going to be Dalton calling or a Monde minimum calling, or any one of these much smaller? The little I say, the, the Spurrer minimum, uh, the Monde minimum, the Dalton minimum, and this later minimum, and up we are here because, of course, temperature after the little ice ages took us up here, but it will continue. We don't switch off the sun. We cannot switch off the sun. We have to obey for it. And we cannot do anything about it. It's just to follow what it's, it changes. That's the total contrary to, to the idea of CO2, where you think you can do something. Uh, sunspot number and total solar irradiance has not the course, but of course it's related and it's all driving together. <coughs> this is the explanation of this effect, how it's the shielding. I talked about a weak solar magnetic field, weak shielding, and large input of, C of, of, of beryllium 10 and production of C14. Okay? So when you me measure those isotopes, as a matter of fact, you measure the strength variation, which is, I have to stress it, which is not solar irradiance, but it's solar wind interaction, as Pierre showed. Strong, it is the opposite. Fine, thank you. Uh, the sun magnetic field shields the Earth from cosmic radiation. And that we can measure it in, in, with our uh, terrestrial um, parameters. Magnetic flux from the set, the more the minimum, Dalton. <coughs> Whenever solar magnetic flux was low, temperature was low. So it's about the same thing. Now we come. 
come to other. When cosmic ray, rays are high, cloud cover is high. And this is, of course, this is Sven's mark thing. But it's a nice observational base. Now we are not in theory. Uh, Svensbeck had an idea, a theory, and it, he was very much hunted for it. And it took a lot of time and effort and suffering from him to pr proceed. And now we are, can look back and then we see, God, there are correlations. And that's, that's how we have to do it. And the same, Carl, we have to do with your idea of, of, uh, uh, of pressure instead of theory. So that's a theory, and it has to go to checking and pe before uh, we can be sure, but, and it, it, these things come out. Then the cosmic rays and, and temperature, that's very nice, the cosmic ray and temperature, they really correlate quite well. <laughs> but this is what Easterbrook shows. <laughs> and this is the way of, of, of trying to tell you of the ionization and the shielding strength and the production of these isotopes or the control of the infall of them, that, like beryllium. C14 is a production. And now comes something very important. Conclusion, correlation of temperature, temperature, sunspots, solar irradiance, solar magnet, magnetism, Cosmic ray intensity, C14 variation, beryllium variation, ground solar maxima minima, cloudiness, and total solar flux. Cannot just be coincidental. Cannot be co coincidental. <coughs> it has to have some cause and effect linkage. That is his main <coughs> message. Um, and then it is the medieval warm optimum. This was here. The little ice ages, and we are up here now. We can compare this with this one, uh, uh, and we discussed that too. We know in the warm period we had a great progress in uh, our cultural civilization. Here we invented a lot of other things which we couldn't do before. We could have uh, festivals on the ice, because ice was on the Thames. Philip. Yes. No. So, um, uh, this is the basic thing. So, uh, glo then you talk with, uh, we are going into the global cooling is far greater threat than global warming. Okay? And there is Florida, it's not so nice. And here, uh, Josh, you know this picture. And the end. <coughs> with all the credit to Don, this great scientist uh, with so much on his lyre. 